So today I'm going to show you how to create a Halloween mask. We're going to take uh, some simple masks from the uh, mask shop here. I think it's like a dollar for this thing and like three or four dollars for this thing. Um, and we're going to convert them from just plain old like a white plastic and then a black vinyl into the creation that you see here. Kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, creature here going on. So stick around. We'll show you how it's done. All right, so to get started with this project, you're going to need a few things. And one of those is going to be, of course, a brush. Now, uh, I'm going to use a really cheap, what they call a chip brush here. Uh, you can get these for less than a dollar at your home improvement store. Sometimes you buy them in bulk. Uh, and that's generally what I do. I buy them by the case uh, because you use them a couple times and you toss them away. They're real cheap and they're not very good brushes, um, but they will do for what we're trying to do here. And the nice thing about it is they have a, a pretty stiff bristle on the end. And you can see it's not a very nice looking brush. It's kind of frayed there at the end. And actually, the uglier and the grungier this is, and the more frayed this is, the better the look that you'll get for this type of effect that we're going to do. So um, you're going to need the brush. Uh, the other thing, uh, I have it in a little spray bottle here, just a little pump action spray. But this is just uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this particular one is 50% by volume, and that just simply means that the pure alcohol has been mixed with pure water, and so it's cut it down. Uh, it's cut its strength. You can use 50, 70, or 90. I think they have it in 90 or 91% as well. Any of those will work just fine. We're going to use this as an astringent, a cleaning agent, to clean off the oils that are on our mask. Now, the mask itself, um, as you saw in the beginning here, um, this is obviously not finished yet, uh, but that mask, um, well, it's just a vinyl mask. And uh, so uh, does it really matter, your, matter the manufacturer here? We're just working with this particular one. And this will work with pretty much any vinyl mask. But you first have to determine, is it vinyl or is it latex? And so there's a couple of things you can do to check for this. If it doesn't say it on the label, um, then one thing you can do is just kind of squeeze it a little bit. If I squeeze this mask, yes, it will crush. It is somewhat soft, but it has a little resistance to it. And um, usually when you have something that is made out of latex, it's much softer. It's a little more like a sponge. Um, it will give a little bit more. So find a, maybe like a detailed part on this, like there's a lot of angles and stuff here. So if I squeeze that area where those angles are, it's a little more rigid. Uh, like I said, a latex mask wouldn't be quite as rigid, especially in a detailed area like that. It's just, it's just my way of checking it. Uh, another way to check it is if you look on the inside, the part that wasn't supposed to be viewed by you. So if I just flip this mask inside out here, I can see that, well, one, there's these little pore things here. It, it looks, uh, looks like, you know, drips of liquid whatever. Uh, that you can find in latex as well. Um, but... Um, you know, we definitely know that this was a liquid that was poured in here, but see how shiny this is and compared to the outside. Now, sometimes the outside could have a shiny finish to it, but typically they don't. Um, this just is where uh, this part touched the mold. This part did not touch the mold. So this part remained really, really shiny. And so that also kind of tells me that uh, odds are this is vinyl. So with those factors in mind, I have determined that this is a vinyl mask and most of the inexpensive masks are. Uh, so we've got that. And then your paints. So the reason you want to determine what this is, is it latex or is it vinyl? That is definitely going to affect the type of paint that you can use. So in this case, because I'm working with vinyl, I cannot use oil-based or enamel paints. They simply won't dry on vinyl and they will be kind of tacky and gooey for quite some time. Uh, so you definitely don't want to use that. Instead, you want to use acrylic-based paints. And so that's what I have here. I have a variety of just craft paints. They're all acrylic-based. Uh, so how do we do this? Now that we know what it is we need, uh, of course, paper towels, uh, that's a must. You have to have those uh, for every project. I'm going to go ahead and tear off a couple of those right now because we're getting ready to put that to use. Uh, I want to go ahead and remove the tags here. All right. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. 
All right. And um, the little straps are sewn on, so I'll just leave them on here. Maybe just kind of tuck them inside a little bit. Um, but when these things are put in the mold, uh, they spray a release agent. It's usually some sort of wax. Um, and then they pour the liquid in there. It just helps this pop out of the mold. So we want to remove that. That's what the alcohol is for. So you can spray it directly on the piece, or you can spray it on your, your little cloth here. And then I just want to wipe it around in there. And I like using alcohol because it has a little bit of a bite to it. It actually eats away at that waxy um, finish that's on here. And it takes that off, the release agent. But uh, it also dries almost instantly. So that's great. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and lay down a good base coat of your, in my case, silver. And I'm going to do this by dry brushing the color onto it. So I just load up my brush and then I wipe the brush off quite a bit with either a paper towel or even a paper plate, which is always good to use as a paint palette. And what you're trying to do is just knock off the vast majority of the paint. You just want a little bit of paint on your brush. And as you lightly brisk your brush across the surface of your mask or whatever it is you're trying to paint here, uh, small deposits of that paint will be left behind only on the raised surfaces. Now, you can continue to build up this process by just continuing to dry brush over the affected areas. You just go over it multiple times and you'll start building up more and more paint. But take your time, go through it slowly. For this project, I started with a silver and I just dry brushed over the raised areas. And then I went back and started dry brushing other colors onto the other parts of this mask. So for the main body of the mask, I really wanted more of a worn leather or worn rubbery kind of a feel to it. So for that, instead of using a silver, I used a lot of browns and greens. And for that, I wanted to put them down in a specific order. So I started with a... Uh, a burnt sienna and then I used a raw sienna over the top of that and then finally went back over the top of that with a couple of greens. Now when I got to the final point of this particular part of the mask I used a what they call a lime green it's the bright green but I used it very very sparingly. There's just a tiny hint of that on the mask at all. But by building up a variety of these colors and dry brushing them on, a good bulk of the black undercolor here, the color that was already on the mask, is showing through. And so we're getting this effect of kind of, like I said, a worn leather or perhaps even just a worn rubber, just kind of a grungy mask. Well, now I want to paint the canisters, and in this time, I want to just paint more a traditional method. However, I am going to use one of my other ratty brushes. This is a brush I normally use for dry brushing because it's not a perfectly smooth brush. And in this case, it only adds to the effect because it leaves behind little streaks of paint. So I'm getting more paint coverage, but I'm still leaving that kind of distressed look because of the brush that I'm using. Alrighty, folks. Well, uh, here we are about done with this. Uh, I've put the uh, uh, green on here. And once again, I didn't try to get it perfect. You know, some of those striations in there kind of help sell the effect that, you know, this thing's old and worn. Uh, but we can take this a little further. So what I'm going to do is mix up a wash. Now, so let's see how we're going to mix up a wash. Now, a lot of people are going to grab a cup and they're going to grab their black paint and they're going to they're going to squirt them a lot of black paint in there. And then they're going to take water or whatever medium it is that they want to use to water this down with. Uh, water is fine. I have some that I mix up here. Um, I put a little bit of dishwashing liquid in the water, and that kind of helps to break the surface tension of the water and also helps to kind of let this flow. But honestly, my favorite product for this, once again, is going to be this Pledge Floor Care finish. So this was used to be called Future Floor Wax, but this stuff is like pure acrylic. I love using this stuff. It's very watery, so I'm going to add some of that to it too. Uh, and another reason why I use this uh, in a, a wash or anything like that is because this stuff is almost like glue, especially when we're working on, you know, something like the vinyl here. This is going to help that paint bond to that vinyl. So 
I got a lot of uh, water and the pledge in this. So let me grab a brush here and just kind of swirl this around. And a lot of people, this is where they'd stop. Okay, it's a black wash. You know, it's kind of a, a really dark gray. It's not a pure black. And this is where they'd stop and they just start brushing this on there. But uh, eh, that's not good enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is take some green and this is just a dark green. It could be a medium green. I'm gonna squirt a little of that in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of my burnt sienna here. So some brown, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be burnt sienna, it can be brown. I'm gonna put a lot of that, or a little bit of that in there. I'm not putting a lot of these paints in there. I really want more water and more of the future than I have paint. But what this does is it knocks off that black. Uh, so it's not so much black anymore. You really want it kind of oily. And so I'm just going to take my brush, load it up with my wash here, and just start applying it to where I want this griminess to it. And I'm just going to let it flow. Now you can also help it flow around a little bit by adding just some clean water. So I just dip in some clean water here and just brush it over the area that I just applied the wash. And just kind of go back and forth between the wash and the water and just kind of push it into the creases and the recesses. Now the paint itself is going to want to go to that area naturally. And when it dries, you get a great effect. Well, all right then. Uh, our uh, little mask here, our little Halloween mask is complete. Uh, the wash has dried. It does take the wash considerably longer to dry because there's a lot of water in that. And so uh, you just have to be patient with it, let it dry out, and you'll get these really great results. Now, the next step here and the final step is optional. Um, I like to do it because it helps to protect the work, but you don't necessarily have to do it. And that's to seal all of this with some sort of clear coat. And my weapon of choice for this is... Krylon matte finish and I'm not necessarily endorsing the product or not but I can just tell you from my own personal experience of 20 plus years of using this product um, it is awesome I use it on all of my model kits to seal them in between paint coats and then for the final coat especially if I want that dead matte kind of flat look to it and I do want that for this so I'm gonna get the protection of the clear coat and then it's also going to dull the color down even more than what it is so that's great so Krylon matte finish um, it's you'll find it in the paint aisles but a lot of times you'll find it maybe in the craft section and uh, that's generally where I find it is in the paint section and in the craft section at uh, Walmart um, but anyway it um, it has paint brushes on it, and like I said, I've been using this for over 20 years. I had originally started using this uh, for what it was intended to seal pencil artwork, and uh, so that's what it's for. Uh, but it works great with these acrylics. So uh, I'm not gonna spray that on camera because this too is lacquer-based, and um, boy, that will eat up some brain cells if you don't have a proper respirator on. So anytime you're gonna use a, an aerosol, especially something like this product, you definitely want to use it out in the open somewhere, maybe outside uh, where there's plenty of breeze going or at least plenty of air so you can get away from the fumes or get you a good quality respirator uh, before you shoot this. Cause trust me, you don't want to kill any more brain cells than you have to and this will do it. So uh, great stuff there, love that. And that's how I would finish this particular project. Now for the next bit here, we're gonna take a simple uh, mask and paint it up to look like uh, robotic. So this was just the first part. This is just going to cover, you know, the lower half of the face, like so. So what do we do with the upper half of the face? So for that, have a simple plastic mask, and this is one of the really thin ones. Uh, I've already done a little bit of work to this. It originally started out as white, uh, and these are vacuum formed. They're very, very thin. Uh, and all I've done is put a coat of black primer on this. Actually, it's a really, really dark gray. It's not a black. Uh, and then I put a little bit of screen mesh in the eyes uh, just to give it a little bit different look. So uh, anyway, these two are gonna come together and look something like this. And, um, and so what I wanna do now is go ahead and start painting uh, kind of a metallic robotic uh, Android type of a face here on this. So uh, come back and check out that video too.